So yesterday, or for you guys on Tuesday, for me, I did it yesterday as well. Uh, we talked about getting uh, values out for our trig and our trig equations uh, and, our, and our trig functions. So we, we practice getting the sine of pi over 2, uh, you know, cosine of 3 pi over 4, those kind of things. Uh, and that's what part of your homework is going to be. But I'm also, uh, a part of the homework is also going to be getting, uh, going the other way and getting trig equations. So that'll answer questions like, where is the cosine 1 half? And you'll have to answer questions like that. And so we're going to practice a couple of those today. Sine of x equals negative 1 half. All right, we're starting simple. We're starting with problems where we don't have to do any, you know, equation solving. We just have to think about the trig. That's what we have to focus on. So it might be helpful for us to have this off to the side. Because we know that sine is supposed to be negative. And so which quadrants is that going to happen in? Negative in 3 and 4. 3 and 4. Because uh, that means, remember, sine is our y coordinate. So where is our y coordinate negative? It's in quadrants 3 and 4. If you want the memory trick, then all students take calculus. That means that sine is positive in the second quadrant. So that means it's negative in the 3 and 4. Okay, So we're living in quadrants 3 and 4. And then we want to know, uh, let's deal with the 1 half part. Which uh, angle or pattern are we looking at sine being 1 half? At the answer coming out being 1 half. Let's just deal in the first quadrant. Yes, we are trying to get angle measurements. You want, you want measurements, well, you can start in degree, but we're going to convert it to radians for a final answer. You can, sure. So where are we looking at 1 half for the values? Which angle is that? It's the pi over 6 angles, right? Because the 30 degrees and the 30, 60, 90 are going to give me opposite being 1 and hypotenuse being 2. So we're looking at pi over 6 angles, but we're looking at the pi over 6 angles that are in the third and fourth quadrants. So our two answers. In the third quadrant, my pi over 6 angle is just past pi, so 7 pi over 6. And in the fourth quadrant, we're just shy of 2 pi. So 11 pi over 6. And those are our two answers. A lot of the time, we're going to end up with two answers. Not always, though. But you should be on the lookout for multiple answers for sure. Tangent of x equals 1 is our next one. I'll give you a 30-second head start. I usually like to start by centering myself around, OK, what angle are we talking about? And then from there, say, OK, what quadrants is that angle going to live in? Which is asking, OK, we want tangent to be positive. Where does that happen? So first of all, which angle has got the tangent of 1? If we got a tangent of 1 over 1, then we're looking at our 45, 45, 90 pattern, which means we're looking at pi over 4. We're looking at some pi over 4 angles, and we want the pi over 4 angles that are in quadrants 1 and 3. 1 and 3 are where tangent are positive. 
They're all positive in the first quadrant, so pi over 4 in the first quadrant. And then we're looking at the pi over 4 angle in the third quadrant. That would be just past pi. So 5 pi over 4. Where's cosine 1? At 0. At 2 pi, uh, we, we uh, inclusive of 0, x, so to be more specific. That's the interval I want my answers to be in. I should have been clearer about that. So. We want to include 0, but not include 2 pi, so that we don't have an, a repeating answer. That's the idea. Because technically, the solution is 2 pi k. I think you used k as the letter for that. That every 2 pi, the cycle repeats, and cosine is 1 again. So at 2 pi, at 4 pi, at 6 pi, and at negative 2 pi, negative 4 pi. But if we're just looking at our first cycle, starting at 0, then where cosine is 1 is at 0. All right, one more, which should determine. If it helps. This is equivalent to asking, if I flip it, this is equivalent to asking for when sine, flipped cosecant, when sine is negative root 3 over 2. That means the same thing. When is sine negative root 3 over 2? Uh, and that means that the angle that you should be looking at is pi over 3. We should be talking in pi over 3 land. And in pi over 3 land, which quadrants are we looking in? In other words, where is cosecant negative? Well, cosecant's negative, where sine is negative, which is in quadrants 3 and 4. So we're looking at the pi over 3 angles in quadrants 3 and 4. So that means just past pi just short of 2 pi. So like a lot of uh, equations uh, where you have some function, uh, this is the case when you're solving equations involving square roots. It's the case when you're solving equations involving logs. If you got other stuff going on outside of that function, you want to get rid of it to get the function by itself. So if you remember solving equations with square roots, one of the things you probably did is to get the square root by itself. Equations with absolute values, you got the absolute value by itself. Equations of logs, you got the log by itself on one side. In this case, I want to get the tangent by itself. So in order to get the tangent by itself, we're going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. So we just have tangent of x on the right equaling 2 over negative 2, negative 1. And now we're back down to when is tangent negative 1. So don't worry about the sign yet. Just think if we're talking about the tangent being 1, what angle are we looking at? Well, we dealt with that before. That's the pi over 4. It's the 45, 45, 90 pattern. And then what quadrants are we living in? This time I want tangent to be negative. Tangent's negative in quadrants 2 and 4 because tangent is positive in the third quadrant. So in quadrants 2 and 4, we've got 
in quadrant two, then we want to be short of pi. We want to stop short of pi. And in quadrant four, we want to stop short of two pi. So we want to be just short of eight pi over four, seven pi over four. First thing we want to do, get the secant by itself. How are we going to do that? Multiply by what? Five. By 5 on both sides. Or divide by 1 fifth, which means the same thing. These cancel. So to these, and we just want to know where secant is root 2. which, if you prefer, is the same as asking when is cosine 1 over root 2. Uh, and if we're dealing in root 2, then hopefully that should be a clue that we're looking at 45, 45, 90. And so that's going to put us in pi over 4 land. And in pi over 4 land, we want to narrow down, now that we know we're dealing in pi over 4 land, we want to narrow down the quadrants we're talking about. Root 2 is positive this time, so I want to know where secant or cosine are going to be positive. They are going to be positive in the first quadrant, so pi over 4, and in the fourth quadrant. So I want to stop just short of 2 pi. There's my answers. How many had it right? One, two, three, and four. So we look for when cosine is negative one half. And that's at those angles, because cosine is negative in quadrants two and three. Okay, let's let's solve that first. And then we'll throw in the twist. This isn't the problem, but it, I just want to make sure we can deal with this before we, can, before we start dealing in the rest of it. Have we got our answers? Yes? OK. Now. Still equals one. There's your twist. Now your solutions that you just got are still going to be useful. This time we can't bring that pi over four magically outside of the trig. We've got to solve the trig part of it first, and then dig inside the parentheses. Here's what that means. Cotangent of whatever's inside there is 1. When I had the original equation up there, what were your solutions? Where was cotangent positive 1? Pi over pi over 4. And then where else is 
it positive? It's 5 pi over 4. Okay, 5 over 4 and 5 pi over 4 are where cotangent is positive. So that mess inside, we want to control it so that the stuff inside here comes out to be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to pi over 4. We're going to set it equal to 5 pi over 4. And then we're going to solve it so that we have controlled and know that what's inside the parentheses is going to come out to be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So theta plus pi over 4 equals pi over 4. Oh, well, I can subtract. Theta is 0. Or I can make it 5 pi over 4. in which case I subtract a pi over 4. And theta is pi. And if you're not sure that you've controlled it correctly, then you can plug in values. You can try out values. Try plugging in pi. What happens when you plug in pi? Well, the stuff in here comes out to be pi. And then I add a pi over 4. So this is 4 pi over 4. And a pi over 4 being 5 pi over 4. Hey, it came out how we wanted it to. So think about it. If there's stuff inside the trig, then think about what angles you want first. And then you're going to control the stuff inside of here so it comes out to be the angles that you want. That's the idea. We might practice some more of those uh, when you come back next week. Uh, our plan is Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to make sure that we're good to go with logarithms. And then Wednesday and Thursday, I'm going to, uh, actually, I'll save the, the, that review for next time. Uh, I think Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to start, we're going to do chapter one. We're going to start the actual calculus. It's time. <laughs>